goes man horror here today's story yeah Finn in the cabin the old man was weak and sick his body wouldn't last much longer I made the old man get up and walk to the window he looked out and saw them standing there in the snow. There were four hunters gathered around outside the cabin. I saw them too through his eyes. The hunters carried long guns. I was shivering with the cold. One of them walked up and banged on the door. Hello in there, he shouted. Hello, we're lost. We need a place to stay for the night. I pulled the old man away from the window and made him bar the door. We have little money we can give you, the hunter shouted. We just need a warm place to spend the night. A little food, if you can spare it. We're freezing to death out here. I made the old man throw another log on the fire. You don't need to be scared of us, the hunter said. We'll leave our guns outside. We don't mean any harm. I made the old man pick up his rifle and aim it for a slit in the cabin door. Then I giggled as I made him pull the trigger. There was a loud bang. A wild hunter dropped in the snow. He didn't know what hit him. The others were taken off guard. They dragged their friend's body away and took cover behind the trees. Drown shots exploded, ripping through the wooden door and breaking some of the windows. I released my hold of the old man's brain. He collapsed in a heap on the floor. I flew up the chimney and soared above the cabin. The gunshots stopped, and the hunters retreated. They would be back. I flew high above the treetops and followed them. When they stopped, they drifted down and landed in the branches of a tall tree. The hunters were below me. They were setting up camp and building a fire. There were three of them now, a fat one, a skinny one, and a bearded one. Dead one lay nearby, straining the, staining the snow, red with his blood. I had no use for him. The bearded one chopped wood with his axe. He looked healthy and strong. The skinny one was struggling to light the fire, while the fat one just sat there and watched. I listened as the fat one spoke to the others. He told them they would camp there for the night. And in the, mor in the morning, they attacked the cabin and killed the old man. I sat there in the branches of the tree and waited for night to come. When it was dark, the man, men curled up around the blazing fire and tried to get some sleep. I waited until they were lying still. I dropped down noiselessly into the snow. I crept towards the fat man, who was wrapped up in his fur coat, snoring peacefully. Slowly I reached out and got hold of the fat man's mind. I made him get up and walk to where the dead man lay in the snow. I made him kneel down beside the corpse and take out his hunting knife. Then I made him saw through the neck of his dead friend. When he was done, I made him smear his face with blood. Then I made him pick up a severed head and carry it back to the fire. I released my hold on the fat man's mind. That's when I left him, standing in front of the fire, smeared with blood and holding the dead man's severed head. When he looked down and saw the head, he screamed. I woke the others. They scrambled to their feet and stared in horror. The severed head, the fat man, was clutching. I watched it all for the safety of the trees. There were shots of more screams. As a skinny one and the bearded one grabbed their guns and blasted the fat man till he lay in a bloody heap on the snow. Now there were only two. They sat up by the fire and waited. Waited. They sat by the fire and waited. I watched and waited too. 
They were waiting for dawn to arrive. When they would attack the cabin and kill the old man, bearded one threw more wood on the fire. He was too scared to sleep. The skinny one was weaker. He lay down and closed his eyes. I took my chance, creeping up the, to the skinny one and reaching into his mind. I made him take out his hunting knife. I made him s- slowly get up to his feet. The bearded one stared at us. Wondering what was going on, I made the skinny one leap across the flames and attack the bearded one. The skinny one was weak and the bearded one was so too strong for him. I knew he would lose the fight. I released his mind and flew into the trees to watch him as from a safe distance. There was a fierce struggle, but in the end the bearded one prevailed. He plunged the hunting knife to his friend's chest and left his skinny one to bleed out to the snow on the snow. Now there's only one. I flew back to the cabin and slipped down the chimney. The old man lay on the floor where I left him. I took hold of his mind again. We reached, we searched for the cabin. There's not much in a place that I could use. In a rusty metal box I found a pair of garden shears. Handles were rusty, but blades were still sharp. I made the old man pick them up. I made him look out the window. Through his eyes I saw the bearded one coming. Across the snow he's going at the ready. He fired his gun and a bullet ripped through the cabin door. I made the young man shout, Okay, I'm coming out. I made him open the garden shears and place the blades at either side of his neck. When I, then I made him throw open the door, walk out in the sunlight. The bearded one saw him. He stopped in his tracks and raised his gun. What are you up to, old man? He demanded. The old man didn't say a word. I wouldn't let him. The bearded one cautiously approached. Why did you have to start shooting at us, he asked. We didn't mean you any harm. We just needed a place to stay. The old man resisted me for a moment. I lost control. Thin wall. Well, escaped his lips. Help me, he begged. A regain troll of his mind. Suddenly all the strength he had. His withered arms that made him snap. The handles of the hands... Uh, shears together, blaze snapped together, slicing off his head. He fell to the ground with a thud. His body crumbled and collapsed in a bloody heap. My grip of his mind was broken. I floated upwards. Bearded one was so shocked and stunned. And we could do is stare in horror at the terrible sight. I took advantage of his momentary weakness, dropping onto his shoulder, onto his shoulders, and reaching to his brain to take charge. Now he was mine. After we dragged the bodies into the cabin, we feasted on the remains until I was satisfied. I made the bearded man throw another log on the fire. We sat in the rocking chair, together we rocked back and forth, enjoying the heat from the roaring flames. The bearded one was strong and healthy. His body would last a long time. <laughs>